Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching and thanks to our producer, Jeff DeRaw. We're at USD 489's transportation facility talking with Transportation Director Russ Kenningson. And uh, Russ is uh, Transportation Director for USD 489. And we were trying to figure out, well, is it the bus barn or is it the transportation facility, <laughs> Russ? What are we going to call we'll it? We'll call it the facility today. Uh, that's good. <laughs> because it not only includes the storage for the buses and the location where the buses eventually wind up at the end of the day, but the offices are right out front now in the new facility there. Correct. And uh, give us some facts and figures about transportation for USD 489. First of all, how long have you been director, Russ? I've been here about a year and a half okay. now. So. And what does uh, staff include? Uh, i got about 28 bus drivers full-time and part-time. Mm -hmm. Then we have a full mechanic on staff. And then myself's director, we have a office manager mm -hmm. and a dispatch. And part of this is to coordinate all of these buses and all of the activities and responsibilities of the Transportation Department for the district. Right. Which right. is no small task, as yeah. I well know. A lot of things go on, yes. All right, let's talk about some facts and figures. How many students generally, and these are numbers from last year because obviously we don't have numbers from this year, but right. last year, how many students approximately would use the transportation rest? We had approximately a little over 1,000 students last year we transported. And uh, this is daily, right? Correct. And that is getting students to and from their schools. Right. right. In addition to that, what other uh, things go on in transportation? Well, we have morning routes and afternoon routes, you know, picking kids up from school, take them home. Uh, we do Head Start. We transport for Head Start. We transport for special needs students. Mm -hmm. And then during the day, uh, after drivers run their morning route, you know, we run to school to school, we transport students to schools, uh, field trips, mm -hmm. uh, activity trips for sporting events or band and vocal. So uh, there are students that go to different schools for different classes. So throughout the day, all day long, our bus drivers are running individual routes, you know, to and from schools. Let's talk about the types of buses uh, that are used. And of course, I think most people in the district, or certainly those that have been in the district, are familiar with the Suburbans, the smaller vehicles, which are kind of like the, uh, the household Suburban, if you will, uh, only with more mileage, I think, probably <laughs> most of them. But uh, the Suburbans all the way up to the larger buses. Talk about the different types. Russ. Yeah, we have uh, cars and Suburbans that we use mm -hmm. uh, and buses. All of, everything is inspected by the Highway Patrol, mm -hmm. so they're passed by that. And after that's passed, then we can transport students in those vehicles. So if we have just one or two students that we're transporting around schools, we'll use cars and Suburbans. And if it's larger that we need buses, you know, our Suburbans hold up to nine. So if more than that, we'll take the buses and transport them just to and from schools. Suburbans hold nine. About your larger size buses, what's about the maximum capacity? They'll go anywhere there? from about 10 up to about 70 mm -hmm. students can be transported in a bus. Now each of those uh, transportation devices, whether it's suburban all the way up to the big buses, have to be inspected on a yearly basis by the Kansas Highway Patrol, is that correct? Right, correct, our mechanic goes through an inspection and he signs off and then our Highway Patrol comes in and mm -hmm. inspects them after that and signs off on them. And what about uh, the ages? Uh, what's the age range approximately of some of these vehicles? Uh, zero up to about, we can go up to 25 years maximum life. Mm -hmm. uh, getting 25 years out of a bus is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, with the dailies running around town, beating around town, hauling students. So if we can get 10 to 15 years, that's about the max you can get out of the bus before you put a lot of repairs into them. And it, it becomes just like a personal vehicle. It becomes a situation, well, it's costing more to repair it than it is to replace it. Correct. Correct. And with the budget, you were able to add a couple of new transportation pieces last year, right? Yeah, last year we was able to get a new activity bus and a new route bus mm -hmm. that we use for activity and for routes. And then right now we're going through trying to set up a new plan to start rotating our buses through, you know, on a yearly basis, try to upgrade suburbans and cars and, and buses. I wanted to ask you about that because you really have to build in some kind of a schedule for replacement, otherwise right. you get caught with half a dozen vehicles that need replacing now and the budget just won't uh, handle it. Yeah, buses can range over $100,000 a piece, so mm -hmm. it's a, quite a chunk of money. So yeah, mm -hmm. so right now we're 
working on getting a five-year plan and getting buses rotated in and out and try to get them on a routine basis and get rid of them before worth or still worth a little bit of money and still down to zero dollars. Matter of fact, you've got a couple you're going to sell off this year, right? Yes, we got four buses we're going to put in surplus right now and sell on Purple Wave, so rotating those out. And uh, are there markets for buses, school buses, that have uh, that kind of mileage or that kind of usage on them? There's a little bit. When we get rid of them, they're pretty well past the use life. They'll need repairs. So people buy them for, we had one that bought them for farm equipment, turned into a farm like a truck. Mm -hmm. Some buy them for the bus races you'll see at the Ellis County Fair and stuff. So some people buy them for that reason. So, And I guess sometimes we see some of the uh, the previous school buses that used for church groups and things Correct. like that yep. for transportation. Yep, seen that too. Yeah, people turn them into campers and at the lake. Give us an idea of the number of miles just for the daily route that you cover, Russ. Uh, it can range anywhere from 20 miles a day up to about 70 miles a day just for our routes in mm -hmm. town. And you're in Ellis County, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, of course, there are the standard uh, bus routes where you take the kids to and from school, but there are a lot of other uses for the transportation vehicles, right? Yes. Yeah, we use them for a lot of activity trips. You know, our activity trips are Wichita, Liberal, you know, Kansas City. So we, when we go on our activity trips, they're gone for a long time. So mm -hmm. it's a, we put a lot of miles on our activity buses. And we have high school, all their sports. We have seventh and eighth grade sports. Mm -hmm which uh, seventh grade started last year, so it really increased a lot of our activity miles that we travel. So, and then all the field trips we go on, you know, famous figures, you know, and they go down and do their concerts and stuff, mm -hmm. not at school, so we do, we're always driving those buses anywhere and everywhere. I was thinking from years past that sometimes here in the transportation area, or the bus barn as we used to call it, that uh, you'll come in and the place will be vacant. I mean, there's not a single right. transportation vehicle in the facility because yes. they're all in use. Correct. And scheduling has to be one of the biggest challenges. I would it, it is a big challenge. Our dispatch does a wonderful job doing that. So between uh, people taking cars out for in-service, you know, mm -hmm. going to training and even our Suburbans are used for sporting activities mm -hmm. for tennis or golf where there's enough that they can just take a Suburban instead of a bus. We do a lot of that. So, so yeah, it's, uh, we get we can have anywhere from zero trips to 15 trips going out in a day. So and that's trying to coordinate day. that with our regular routes that we have for school gets gets busy some days. Yeah, and that's one day. Yes, where exactly. the, that many may be involved. Right. Okay. Let's talk about the drivers. You said how many approximately full and part time? Yeah, approximately 28 full and part time drivers. Uh, it's quite a process to be a bus driver. You got to first have a commercial driver's license, mm -hmm. either a Class A or Class B. Mm -hmm. And you got to go to the DMV. DMV, you have to take a general knowledge test, you got to take an air brake test, have to take a passenger written test, and a uh, passenger test, a school bus test. So there's mm -hmm. several pa tests you got to pass, written test. Mm -hmm. If you pass all those, then you can go and take, you have to take a driving test with them, and you have to do a pre trip test. Mm -hmm. So you got to do all that just to, just to get to this point. Just to get in the driver's just seat. Just to get right? in the driver's seat, correct. And then here we have to do DOT physicals. You have to do physical every two years. Uh, we do CPR training and first aid every two years. We do defensive driving course every two years mm -hmm. on random drug testing. Uh, we do approximately 20 hours of training before the person becomes a driver with classroom and mm -hmm. driving with or without kids on the bus. So mm -hmm. it's quite a process to all go through just to become a bus driver. And then to that point, then you have to drive with kids on the bus. Ah. And that's uh, half the battle itself sometimes. That's it. The next <laughs> challenge then comes. Correct. To, but uh, you know, when we see these buses out and about, we think, wow, I'm not sure that I could manipulate something that big and uh, that impressive with keeping an eye on the young people as well. Correct, yeah, so it's quite it, a challenge. It is quite a challenge, yes. isn't it? What about, uh, and I know men and women are both uh, driving buses Correct. now. Yep. Uh, what about age range? Is there a particular range or is it all ages? Basically? You have to be 21 to get your license and drive. Mm -hmm. So, but most of our uh, workforce is probably more in the 40s, 50s, 60 range is a lot of our uh, age that we have for bus drivers. Sometimes so. after drivers retire from some other occupation, they sign on as a Yes, we have driver. several that are like semi-retired or retired, you know, from another job and still want something to do, you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, get your weekends off, summers off and stuff. So it's a, it's a nice, I want to call it a part-time job, but it's mm -hmm. a nice job that they come in and, and still have something to do and keep active. Let's talk about some safety issues or safety 
features of the buses. Now we know that state law requires the vehicles to stop at railroad crossing. Uh, there are some other features that are built in that maybe we're not aware of. Talk about some of those. Right? Yeah, the, the seats are made that you don't need seat belts, mm -hmm. and school bus is the safest mode of transportation. So they're close enough that if there's an accident, you know, the kids are safe. They're high seats, so they don't fall over the seats. You know, we mm -hmm. preach safety to the kids. We have safety of, you know, we do evacuation drills with the students twice a year. You know, there's back doors we can get out of, there's side doors we can get out of, there's roof hatches on the top that we can get out of if there's an emergency. So there's a lot of training goes into that and we try to teach the kids that throughout the year. So the access or, or exit, I guess, would be from the back. There's also the side door we see, but there are roof exits yep. as well. Two roof exits also and then the front door itself too. And then there's also windows on each side that'll pop out. You can mm -hmm. get out the windows too. Oh, the on windows, two come windows out on as each well. side. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't remember when the last time a 489 bus was involved in an accident, Russ. It's been a while, so mm -hmm. hopefully that'll still Long go for time. a while. Knock right. on wood, I yeah, guess. Yeah, and a lot of that's with the training that we have, mm -hmm. you know, and we got a great group of people that take it very seriously. Yeah. You know, we're, we're carrying children up and down the road every day, and we take that very seriously, and all the training we go into, we do, every month we do safety meetings. You know, every uh -huh. month we have a safety meeting that we're mandatory to do, so we talk about all the safeties and mm -hmm. things that was good this month or wasn't good so we can adjust to those things. So and those are every month? Every month we have those, so we take it very seriously. Well, and there are some dri drivers have a responsibility too, not drivers of the buses, but other drivers that encounter those buses, right, Russ? Yes, correct. Talk about the changes for parents, if you would, this year. I know policy changes uh, year to year sometimes, Quite a few this year. Talk yeah, about those. We got a big policy <laughs> change this year that uh, we will only transport students that live more than 2.5 miles from their house to school. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous years we did not have that policy, so it's going to cut our transportation e at least in half. Mm -hmm. So wow. we're going to have less routes this year. Mm -hmm. So uh, that'll make a big change. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, that's the biggest policy change that we've had. And we used to run mm -hmm. some buses from school to school before mm -hmm. that, and those are no longer being done either. So mm -hmm. that's a uh, Another big change we've had this year, but that's the biggest change is is no transportation under two and a half miles from home to school. But that'll cut usage by half, maybe. According to last year's numbers, mm -hmm. we figured that would probably cut it about in half and that of our students. Less expense too, for less fuel expense. and time and everything else. Yes, and it's going to probably create more uh, activity around school zones. You know, with mm -hmm. more kids walking, more kids riding the bike, uh -huh. more mm -hmm. parents taking their children to school. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Everybody in town needs to be aware of there's going to be more traffic. Mm -hmm. You know, please take a little extra time. Look for the children walking mm -hmm. around the streets, riding bikes. Uh -huh. You know, because we could see more of that this year mm -hmm. than we have in the past years. And as we always remind drivers, when the bus stops, you stop, whether you're yes. meeting or following that. Yes, uh, we'll have our yellow flashing lights. See a bus with the yellow flashing mm -hmm. lights front and back. That means we're about to stop. Mm -hmm. And then when we stop, we'll open our door and we'll, a stop sign will pop out. Mm -hmm. You know, and that'll be red flashing lights. So mm -hmm. there's a state law or national law, you cannot pass that bus right. while that stop arm is out. We only got about a minute, Russ, but briefly describe the two buses here that are behind us. Uh, the yellow bus, obviously, uh, uh, but uh, the uh, white bus is an activity bus, is that right? Correct. The white bus is an activity bus that we do a lot of our activity for sports, band, vocal, anything like that, out of town trips, mm -hmm. that's an activity. We cannot use it as a school bus, uh -huh. like to take kids to and from school. The yellow buses, we can use it for school, taking kids to and from school, mm -hmm. and if we need to, we can also use it as an activity bus. And the activity bus doesn't have all of the markings that a regular school Correct. bus does, and that's the difference yeah, between Yeah, it does the not two. have the yellow flashing lights, red flashing lights, and does not have the stop arm that pops out. Well, it's quite an operation, Russ. We appreciate you taking the time to tell us about it. It's uh, uh, something that uh, obviously parents are very interested in. Yes. And uh, when you're transporting their children, they become very interested, very, obviously. Yes. And it works both ways because the drivers, the staff, are also interested in the safety of those kids as you well. Bet. Transportation Director for USD 489, Russ Henningsen, thanks for joining us on Community Connection.